Hi guys, I, uh, just having a bit of reflection over running mechanical engines, sort of reminiscing a bit more. We're tending to do a lot more um, electronic engines now than mechanical ones. We're finding that we're sort of way past that tipping point now between running um, electronic engines over mechanical. We run a lot more electronic than we do mechanical. I think probably be about 70% of our engines now are electronic. Sort of, um, I've been dynoing engines now for over 20 years. I remember we had an electronic engine, it was a real big deal. Like it was sort of um, something really of a novelty. We all get excited about it, but now I get sort of excited about running mechanical engines. So, coming in the background right now is 453T. I get um, always emotional when I run these things. I have memories, my very, very first engine I ever built was a 353. Uh, had the upgraded uh, gear train in it. I went from a um, fine spline to a coarse spline drive train and all those sorts of things. And yeah, just sort of reminiscing now, so I thought I'd just do a video. I don't sort of do a video normally with me on the screen all the time. I sort of, as you know, just chuck up the, the videos um, uh, as we go along and I don't tend to commentate too much on, on what we do here. So. But just getting back to just getting back to mechanical engines and just how I mean I can understand why we've gone away from them. I mean we're now in the age of emission regulations and, and those sorts of things. I'll just put that camera down actually. Yeah, we're in the age of um, the age of emission regulations and things like that. And these old mechanical engines just don't have it anymore. I mean they can't obviously keep up with the nitrous oxide emission regulations and things like that. But here in Australia, we tend to we tend to get into some remote areas. I was up in the uh, I went up to the Cape there a little while back, and there's just something about having a mechanical engine that just gives you that that little bit more I don't know peace of mind on my side. I mean, I I, I got a friend who went up there and um, he had a, a he had a car which was electronic and goes to flick the switch to put it into four-wheel drive and it wouldn't go into four-wheel drive so he drives all the way into Weeper in two-wheel drive and sits around for two days to get it fixed and things like that so there's all those things with just having mechanical engines that um, and, mechanic, and, and mechanical cars too that you can just sort of get away with those sorts of things and I know we've got more reliable now with electronics than, than what they started off with but I think we're starting to spin the other way now where we're having almost too much complication with the electronic side because we're running um, we're running far more sophisticated emission systems that we used to have so that's obviously pushing the boundaries of electronics or what I believe it's pushing the boundaries of electronics with things that can go wrong. I know the Amarox now they have a, have a system where if the if the if you disconnect the lambda sensor um, and plug it back in again with the ignition on it'll derate until you take it into a, into a service dealer sitting on 40 50k an hour for several hundred kilometers while you're getting into uh, getting into a dealership so that they can reset the lambda sensor and things like that so it brings me back to yeah this old girl this old 453t i mean it's still kicking goals it's out there working it's doing um it's doing rail work and she's just humming along so not too much issues i mean i suppose if you have if you have a bad operator that's going to run it out of water, well, the computer's not going to, obviously, this thing's not going to pick it up and it'll run till it stops. But uh, likewise, you know, a bit of an advantage of having electronic engines. But you can always chuck a Sentinel system on there, an old, an old mechanical Sentinel system, which will, which will, um, which will help you out if, you, if, you, if you're sort of cautious about that. But it kind of takes away the old days where you used to look at your gauges and you used to always inspect things and have a bit of not so much pride, but you just you just did it. You just did it because that was what you did as an operator. You used to look at your gauges and you check things and have that feel, have that have that ability to have that ability to to sort of be part of the machine. You, you know, you're the brains of the machine and you're doing that. And all that's gone now. All that's out the window. Everything now is 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 just stupefied. Right down to the computer will take care of everything and. Um, you're on your way, so I don't. I don't even think that's a that's a positive. I mean, if you if you're good if you're a good operator and you're a good driver and you do all those sorts of things, you're going to pick stuff up. You're going to smell cool, and if there's something leaking or whatever, which brings me back to my fan my 
fan of mechanical engines. I just really am, and, and, and I've got a lot of, um, I think there's a lot of nostalgia around them, and I think they're, they're, just, they're just wonderful. So we'll go for a bit of a walk around this 453T. Sorry for the rambling. I, I just, um, I've been meaning to do like a, a commentary thing on a mechanical engine for a while now, just to, um, just because every time I run these engines, I dyno engines, I dyno mechanical engines, and I just go, you know what? This, this is, this is, um, this is where my heart is. This really, really is where my heart is. So, let's go out for a bit of a wander and have a look at this uh, 453T, shall we? So, just running right now. Uh, I'll chop the camera around if I can. Hang on. Okay, so here's the uh, here's the 453T that we're just running up. I just got it sitting around 2,000 RPM. As you see there, and, uh, she's all sitting nice and stable. Just humming away. Just humming away. Just to get the back to my love of mechanical engines. I mean, you can build these engines, blueprint them, and build them up two side by side, and they just will have those little characteristics that. Just go, you know what, that's just a little different to the last one I built. And it could be the smallest thing in the tune or something like that, but because of the height, because of the injector height, or just something that's slightly different, and they just got their own personality. They just kind of have that thing. And I know people out there hate these engines. I mean, they despise them. But then you get people like me who just go, you know what, these really are something else. So anyway, let's go and have a look at it, right? We've got a couple, of, um, a couple of these to do. We still keep it real here in Australia like we do in America when it comes to uh, trying to keep these things not so much going again, but the stuff that the equipment's in, it's expensive to replace the equipment and uh, these engines just do the job. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed my little commentary. Once again, sorry for ranting, but set a trip down memory lane. This is a uh, one of my uh, uh, fitters, uh, Joel, built this engine. He's a really, really good young kid, engine rebuilder. Has uh, hopefully, um, hopefully can continue on the um, the tradition of having the nostalgia of that nostalgia on the sorry nostalgia on these things that I do. Just really uh, keep the dream alive. All right, guys. I hope you uh, enjoyed this little bit, and we'll uh, see you next time. Oh, these are my new cameras too sort of working out, ironing out a few bugs. So if we have, uh, it looks a bit funny on YouTube, it's just because we're just ironing out some bugs and we're only gonna make it better as, as we go. Okay guys, talk to you later.